For most of us, work sucks. Am I right? I mean, not everyone is born with a silver spoon or able to tell their boss to stick it. And that was especially true when aspiring wrestlers looking to make a name for themselves in the WWE were handcuffed with occupation gimmicks thanks to the creative mind of one Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Now, some of these characters were indeed quite wretched, but in retrospect, some also had truly enduring entrance themes that have stood the test of time. So join me, Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes. And let's take a look now at 10 WWE Occupation gimmick theme songs that worked surprisingly well. Hello, ladies. It's highly unlikely that Val Venus's occupation of being a porn star would be acceptable in today's wrestling landscape. However, at the time, the WWE was young, dumb, and full of attitude. And an adult character like this fit the era perfectly. Nicknamed the Big Valboski, Venus would make his entrance to the soft core sounds of a seductive saxophone before tearing off his towel and gyrating his hips as the ladies screamed in delight. And although he was never going to rise to the top of the card or main event WrestleMania with a questionable and controversial gimmick like this, he reached the climax point of his career not once, but twice when he became Intercontinental Champion. Call him a mortician, the Grim Reaper, or an undead zombie monster. But ever since his debut at the 1990 Survivor Series, The Undertaker has had the most iconic entrance that for years has signaled the arrival of arguably the most respected wrestler in WWE history. He's had a song to fit every version of every character he's ever played. During the Phenom's legendary 30-plus year career, he's gone through numerous different adaptations of his theme, so much so that the WWE actually released an entire 21-track album back in 2016. There's no question that his music worked extremely well and was a driving factor as to why The Undertaker became such a larger-than-life character before he even stepped inside the squared circle. At the height of the new generation era of the WWE, the occupational gimmick was still leading the way for new wrestlers debuting for the Fed. Now, unlike quite a few other professions on this list, you can at least see some slight parallels between professional wrestling and the hardcore, high adrenaline sport of race car driving. For Bob Holly, the gimmick of redneck NASCAR driver Thurman Sparky Plug worked well in his role of playing a generic, white bread, mid card babyface character. Shaking and in his way to the ring in a cascade of neon and checkered flag colored outfits he obviously borrowed from high energy and his spark plug entrance theme had fans revving their engines whenever this country jamboree began to play however inquiring minds want to know why a guy who's a race car driver would have a cousin named crash One of the more underappreciated occupational gimmicks and entrance themes during the WWE's golden era belonged to Rick the Model Martel. With his striking good looks, slicked back hair, and chiseled physique, the arrogant Canadian looked as if he had just stepped right off of a Paris runway and into the World Wrestling Federation. And when you heard the gentle strumming of harp strings, followed by a sultry saxophone in his model theme song, the essence of Martel's manliness was connected prime and ready to titillate all the juices of your guilty pleasures to the max, yeah! Repo Man. During the whole Your Job Is Your Gimmick era during the 90s, former Demolition member Smash was repackaged into the Repo Man, a sneaky, tow-rope-carrying, Zorro-mask-wearing creep that went around repossessing people's cars, homes, or whatever they couldn't afford to make payments on. Talk about one of the most random occupational gimmicks. However, if you didn't fall in love with the overall goofiness of the character, then something's really wrong with you. Why? 
Here's why. For all you boomers out there, the Repo Man actually looked and acted a whole lot like the Riddler from the 1960s Batman TV show. And what put the Repo Man over the top was his OG shattering glass entrance theme song called Repossessor Blues. That funky like a monkey bass line has no business being that catchy. So we definitely have to give it an up. Right, Simon? Jacques Rougeau is a fabulous Canadian legend. Not from a musical perspective, mind you, because he's nowhere near the level of a crooner like Robert Goulet or a teen heartthrob like the Beebs. Instead, the former WWE Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion bestowed upon us one of the single greatest and cheesiest theme songs of all time when he played the role of the Mountie, an officer in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Rougeau was a vile, corrupt, cattle prod wielding bad guy singing his own personalized obnoxious entrance i'm the mountie featured the quebecer bellowing behind the mic boasting about how handsome brave and strong he was now here's a fun fact for you the gimmick worked so well that it became the subject of litigation in the great white north and ultimately led to jacques being banned from performing as the mountie in canada eh ah take off you hoser <laughs> Erwin R. Scheister was an antagonistic auditor who, much like the IRS, was constantly calling fans and superstars alike tax cheats. Now, the idea of a tax man in wrestling is obviously a little wonky, and I would know because I'm the son of a certified public accountant, but for whatever reason, this occupational gimmick clicked with Mike Rotunda invariably irritating audiences across the country. And what better partner in crime for a crooked tax collector to team up with than the mischievous millionaire who would always try to prove that every Everybody's got a price. Ted DiBiase, created and produced by Jimmy Hart and J.J. McGuire, It's All About the Money, worked so well as an entrance theme song for Money Incorporated and helped the dastardly duo dominate the WWE tag team division in the early 90s. And if my calculations are correct, they captured the World Tag Team Championship three times. While it could certainly be debated as to how serious the job of being a pimp is, it can't be denied that The Godfather was a fun-loving staple of the Attitude Era and one of the most popular occupation gimmicks in WWE history. I mean, who's gonna boo hot chicks, let alone boo a train of hot chicks? And I get it, pimping ain't easy, but what made it work so well was playing this sleazy slice of music that wouldn't sound out of place in some of the seediest rundown late-night joints across America. Called Show Me How It's Done, The Godfather's Mary Ho Train entrance theme was truly the ticket to ride that most of us hot to trot teenagers were ready to climb aboard back in the day. Choo choo. All jokes aside, who'd have thought that an occupation such as a clown would work so well in pro wrestling? Well, all credit belongs to the late maniac Matt Bourne for his comedic, yet downright creepy portrayal of Doink the Clown. When Doink first burst upon the scene, he was a crowd entertainer for the WWE live house show audiences. However, Doink soon morphed into a cruel prankster, squirting little kitties with trick flowers and delighting in making them cry to their mommies and daddies. The gleam in his eye could not hide the evil that lurked behind the makeup, and his entrance music was psychotically perfect too, starting off as silly circus music before descending deep into a dark and demonic theme before suddenly switching back to whimsical circus act sounds. It all made for an occupational gimmick that worked, with the joke being on all of Doink's naysayers. If you ever take a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia, you better read the signs, respect the law and order, you so high Fans forget how over the big boss man was in his prime. However, what they don't forget is just how hard his entrance theme song went, with memorable lyrics like, if you ever take a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia, Hard Times was one well-respected rocker of the WWE's golden era. Whether playing a diabolical heel or a legitimate law enforcement babyface, the real-life Ray Trailer was not only a great worker, but one of the best big men to ever set foot in the squared circle. Loud, colorful, and full of energy, 
strategy. Many of the other occupational characters failed to get over because the guy playing the role couldn't get the audience to buy into their gimmick. Boss Man had no problem doing that, working his former corrections officer job into his promos and always making sure that anyone who dared step up to him served hard time. Hard time.